Blog Talk Radio. Hey everybody, Kyler Davenport here on Blog Talk Radio, coming to you live from Skype.com and Alternative Public Radio International, and we are on tonight with Mr. Ken Dost, my co-host. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. It's raining up here in the Northwest. We're getting a lot of much-needed yes, rain, and... Um, my daughter is uh, sick. We're dealing with that right now. We've got another uh, issue we're trying to deal with here. And, of course, we want to take a moment to reach out. I didn't realize how serious the the Paris bombings were until today. Um, I really have had so many things coming across my desk and uh, coming across the news wire, as usual, uh, 10,000 different issues going on all the time. I really did not understand the depth of this uh, situation, false flag or not. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, uh, I didn't realize all of the people that this touched and the way that it touched them in such a bad way. Oh, yeah. We want to reach out to the families of the 129 families uh, that lost their loved ones, and we want to reach out to all those critically injured that are in the hospital now. And we want to reach out to the families of those yes. that were uh, that were killed. And um, I also just want to let every everyone know before we get started here. I did not realize the depth of this. I'll say it again: uh, the U.S. is on alert tonight. All over Europe is on alert, and uh, people around the world are really shook up. The suicide rate has gone up today tremendously because of this. It's been such a widespread catastrophe. Um, and we're expecting much, much more. So everybody be on the lookout, be on the alert. What can I say? You know, uh, it is what it is, and uh, there's not a whole lot that we as individual single adults can do about it. So, Ken, uh, thank you for being my co-host tonight. I'm just going to kick back and let you introduce your de- uh, guest and, and take this thing off talking about mortgage fraud tonight. I will will do. Thank you. And yes, our hearts do. Our hearts and thoughts do go out to the people of Paris. And uh, this is a serious situation. So, hopefully, it'll. Hopefully, we find some resolve to it. Um, in any event, good good, 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 good evening, everybody. I wrote up a summary of fact defining what a mortgage loan is. And uh, so, what I'm going to do is I, I wrote it down. So I'm going to read through it slowly, which is kind of atypical of my usual speech. And then I've got uh, two people that I want to introduce, Donald Diapp of Emerge and Liz Combs, who spent some time in the uh, mortgage lending industry and the insurance industry, who also has an interesting uh, take on perhaps a solution that may be administrative that we're going to talk about. But first, let's talk about what a mortgage loan actually is. And I'm going to read through it slowly, as I said, because I wrote it down. Um, this is a massive, first of all, what a mortgage loan is, is a massive contradiction of terms. Uh, the borrower in the alleged loan documents is not you, borrower, but the originator, servicer, and other third-party borrowers. The lender is not the lender, purported as in the loan docs. Rather, you, are the borrower, you, you, the borrower, are the lender. Why? Because you donated your legal ownership in a financial asset. That is, your collateral, which is capitalized at least 105% of amortized value. That's the full 30 years or 15 years amortized value. Not once, not twice, not even three times, but dozens of times over, times over and over in securities borrowing transactions for fees and compensation, to which you, me, the alleged consumer borrower, do not receive a single nickel, nothing. We get nothing out of the deal, although we should as we, you, and me, consumer borrowers, are the actual creditor. Why? Because this transaction, as purported and alleged as being a mortgage loan, is in material fact and truth a UCC 2A installment lease to a futures purchase. All notes and riders and remainder interests are entitlements. These entitlements are a basket of securities, a UCC 8 investment contract to which you, me, and the consumer borrower are actually creditors, but we're kicked out of the transaction because of all the deceit and the cover-up that purports these as being a negotiable instrument. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, there is no mortgage loan. There is a credit account to which is posted a letter of credit, a future letter of credit, to which the principal obligor, 
who is the original signatory, which is you and me, is held responsible. In all cases, we're held responsible, which means that the banksters can, can drop all lending standards or they can originate with full lending standards. Or as actually occurred, the banksters and brokers uh, can intentionally uh, uh, place all risk at the, fa- at the feet of consumer borrowers. Services can spit all over us, borrowers, uh, spit all over us borrowers, and they can hide behind this bull crap citing bank secrecy laws and proprietary works. In fact, the criminal banksters can come up, come, come after you as the principal signatory obligor, no matter who you are, how, how many times. As long as, they, as long as they have that original document that they claim to be an original document, but as long as they can claim that you're the original signatory. And because we are dealing with a future purchase closing as opposed to a present-day loan at the time of closing, when the banksters uh, do a default on you, you and me uh, can claim that, 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 that they committed fraud looking back to the loan application. We're the ones that are held liable for the fraud because this is not a present-day transaction. It's a future transaction. So when they, when, when, when they default you, they go back and look at your application and your documents and say, oh, they committed fraud because they lied in their loan application because they're not working now or they're not showing this kind of income. So they've got this perfect system that's fixed so that all insurances pay to them and we lose out on this. Uh, so what happens is your liquidation and auction serves to pay off the original principal balance, which is their debt. It's not yours, but because of accounting fraud, it's turned around on us, sticking us with all taxes, all deficiencies, while Wall Street banksters, servicers, and brokers take rights to all state, real and our living, take all the, the, the uh, tax shelters to which our liquidation opens up a magical golden lockbox filled with credits, filled with insurance monies that they put into their sleazy hands, which in fact should go into our hands. Now, none of this is theory. None of it's theory. None of this is, none of this is fantasy. It's not even supposition. This is all facts. These are all facts that, we've been, that, we've been, uh, that have been withheld from us and intentionally conceived, uh, concealed from us. And uh, these are very sophisticated processes, and uh, these are, uh, uh, it's executed fraud. And that is what's taking place here. So with that, Donald, I'd like to kind of introduce you. Uh, Donald Yap is uh, uh, um, from Emerge. He's got an organization that is trying, that is growing in uh, uh, numbers and to establish a uh, uh, platform for how to address these issues and how to get people to realize that foreclosure, that, that these foreclosure defense strategies and foreclosure defense in general to a debt is, is, is the wrong way to go with this because it doesn't support the facts. So, Donald? Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, it's been a trying 16 years since the um, 1999 Financial Modernization Act. It unleashed this new way um, to uh, for these bankers around the world to uh, actually collateralize their citizens, uh, collateralize government citizens, um, and it dials down into the the things that we want to uh, underscore here is that you know there there are these ideas build on um, uh, laws that they've had passed over the centuries. The first thing that we want to really look at is a law from 1848 called Foley versus Hill. In that particular case, um, before I go on into that, um, I just want to say I'm not a lawyer. I'm just merely pointing out that in this case, um, um, basically, uh, Lord Tottenham back then uh, established the basis of what a um, what the banks could do with the monies you deposited into. The key idea here is about depositing. And you have to get the idea of uh, depositing uh, something into a bank, and we do that all the time with money and in checking accounts and everything. So the, the idea there was he, he, the, the case basically uh, pivoted on two things. If you were a farmer and you you farmed and you brought in a, a you know ten bales of hay to a co-op, 
the question was posed, is it still your hay? And in that particular instance, yes, it, you still own the hay. In the case of your deposit of money into a bank, the bank actually owns your money and can do anything that you have deposited with the bank as it sees fit. So right, how now does fast, that apply? Now, and, then, and then fast forward. What you're saying there is, is, is interesting because when you fast forward it to what's going on now with these uh, automated platforms and trading exchanges, that's exactly what right. they've done. What they've done is they've taken our depository receipt, which is the notes, and uh, they basically put us uh, up on a commodities exchange as fungible commodities. So what you're talking about with agriculture exactly. and with uh, and that's exactly what's going on here. Um, so <laughs> go ahead, Donald. Go, let you continue. Sorry. It, it's exactly that. Um, so during uh, your financing, uh, when you're applying for financing, what is happening is that in the documents they're basically broken up three aspects at least that we know of. That basically, um, first the first event that's going to occur, and there may be two deposits within that particular event. The first event is a deposit event where you're going to deposit uh, your asset, which is the house, in most cases you're being refinanced into the bank's uh, purview, uh, for which they can use and do whatever they wish with. Right, so this builds mm-hmm. on the law from 1848, where Foley versus Hill um, is the basis for uh, why the deposit has to occur. Now, do not confuse the closing event uh, as anything more than that, because uh, for that, you know, the, the main key is to get them to tra- uh, to get you legally to transfer your rights and ownership of that property to their use. Yes, yes, and that's a, and that's what they've done here. That what they've done is they've taken they've taken our notes and they've tra- and they've transferred them. Well, they basically put them through a credit line and they post up a letter of credit and uh, uh because uh, uh they want use of our uh, uh, they, they need our legal ownership. They need, in order for them to hold the principal obligor responsible at the very end of this transaction, which is your liquidation. Uh, they need to have. They they they, they need to uh, uh, keep that deposit open, basically, as an open account, right? And yeah, and it's a, they're they've hidden all these different sections of um, the transaction in the entire financing stream. So mm-hmm. it, uh, it starts with your application, and that's yes. where you know the the right to your signature and the right to the access to um, present your signature and your credit standing and your property as security is actually established in that first stage, and right. then. Let's, let's, well, before they, you go on, let's go back. Let's go back to how it used to be, though, because that, you bring up an important point. Because you sure. brought up three different aspects there. You know, talking about, you're talking about your application, right? You're talking about your yes. credit uh, uh, analysis. You're talking about. I don't know if you mentioned appraisal or not, but let's bring that up. How that was done yeah, in the olden days, and Liz can probably address this better than I can. Uh, no, back in the olden days, this, these were done by uh, uh, by a human person that that that, that 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 did the verifications and everything, right, Liz? Oh, well, absolutely. Um, strict. Underwriting guidelines. Yes, and and, and, and those were abandoned now um, for the automated processes. And uh, uh, but what happened with what what, what transpired here with uh, all these new laws that came into effect, and especially all this hidden automation that we're not aware of, and what this transaction really represents is the fact that uh, uh, in, in the past, in the olden days. Uh, which weren't too old, long ago, uh, you had a person come out and appraise your house, and they would have uh, a, an appraised appraise number and whatnot, and they'd come back to the office at the end of the day, and he might have a stack of 10 or 15 appraisals that might be, you know, worth a, a, an appraisal value of five, six, seven million dollars. But that was just a service. Um, it had no collateral value to it or anything. There was no value behind that appraisal. But what they did now with uh, uh, intellectual properties and with uh, uh, copyrights, patents, and trademarks with uh, uh, the, the inception of UCC revised Article 9, all of a sudden now you're collateralizing these. So now these aren't just services anymore. These are actual collateralized uh, 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 instruments of value. So now we've got a whole different ballgame here. I, 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 and I, I 
seriously believe that in a lot of ways, um, we all understand that, you know, on the surface, uh, there's an $18 trillion debt that the country is actually um, uh, on the hook for. And Mm -hmm. that comes through taxation of its citizens. So the concept here is really actually that um, in if we dial over to a different aspect of the issue, because uh, we have to really know a 360-degree view of what the problem is before we can address it or try or fix it, um, we have to look at what is going on as far as debt on a national level is. Uh, 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 and who is on the hook for that. And we all basically know it's the taxpayer. So the question is, how does that tie into what is happening now? The um, the main thing is that the gross domestic product of a country is measured by the productivity and the commercial energy of each of its citizens. That That's each one of you, me, and, you know, Liz and... Tyler and everybody is the commercial energy that is actually the um, what is what the currency of, uh, of the, uh, the currency and how the dollar uh, value is pegged to now. We used to peg it to gold and silver and metals, and now they are basically um, pegging it to the productivity and the commercial energy of the people. So and, it's created, any, and it's created through electronic money. So everything now, now that right. you're dealing with, you're not dealing with real gold, you're not dealing with any kind of money, you're not dealing with real money at all, you're dealing with accounting entries, and you're dealing with uh, a, 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 a rated security uh, uh, that is, that is marketed for such value. value. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Liz, you talked about this earlier. Why don't you uh, let's bring Liz in and talk about it. Her and I had a conversation earlier about uh, ratings with insurance companies and how Merrill Lynch integrates into these things. Oh, yeah. I worked in uh, Allstate uh, in their accounting department for a, for a time, and my res- one of my responsibilities was to audit Schedule P. And Schedule P is basically a tool that, uh, well, first of all, it, it has to be filed with the Commissioner of Insurance of each state. Uh, and basically what it does is it, uh, it, it, it reports all the reserves of the company in various departments, and in the case of Allstate, at the time I worked there, they had, I think they owned about somewhere between 20 and 25 other insurance companies. And this um, this reporting tool, is it was a means of uh, assuring the insurance commissioner that there was enough money so that the claims could be paid out. So it was a, a measure of, of uh, a company's solvency. But more important than that, in the case of these rating agencies such as Merrill Lynch, it was a tool that they used. So it had it was very important. It had to be very accurate. It was a means for them to rate company stock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is- so when you have an entity that is going outside its own best practices, standards, at the same time rating your company stock based on you complying with those standards, that's a bit of a conflict of interest. And, and, and what we and, and right. it's a huge conflict of interest. And what we talked about earlier, Liz, was how the SEC. Now, this is, this is where you start getting into the background of this stuff and, and how, you t- how how this stuff ties together in so far as fixing these transactions and more 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 direct to the point in fixing the economy and fixing uh, uh, the economy basically to fail and fixing borrowers to fail. Because what she's talking about is the integration between the insurance and and, and uh, the end of this and and the Wall Street banks is cr- is critical. It's crucial. And you, the problem here. You've, you've got so many different agencies that, that can only look down their own single bowling alley, you know, their own single lane, and they can't look across the alleys. So nobody knows what the other one's doing. So you've got the SEC who has, uh, uh, issues what's called uh, these no-action letters. And so Merrill Lynch, uh, and these are illegal actions, but, but the SEC's just giving them a pass on it, essentially. And Merrill Lynch has put a lot of no-action letters in uh, so that they can act in an advisor capacity. So what they're doing is they can, they can play in the insurance industry, and they can play in the, in the banking in, in the investment banking industry as advisors, and they don't have to be held liable for any of this stuff. 
That's where, and, and so, so this, this is where it starts to fuse down. This is, start, this is where you start to see where there's a conspiracy here to basically uh, uh, force people into these loans uh, uh, that they know are going to fail because it's all the insurance. Because what's, what's this, what we're really dealing with here at the end of the day is more insurance than banking. When you, when you think, Liz? I'm sorry? Uh, that what we're dealing with here at the end of the day is more insurance than banking. Oh, yeah. Well, I would say there's a, 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 quite a bit of that. But, you know, the, the fraud that's involved is also uh, it's, a, it's securities fraud on a massive right. scale. Yes, because right. what it they're is. doing is that they're proposing, they're pretending, we'll, we'll call it what it is, yeah. that they're loaning us money. So this is a private securities transaction because any instrument, any note that has a maturity that exceeds nine months is no longer, it's, it, it becomes a security. So what they're doing is that they're taking this private securities transaction and they're converting it illegally into a commercial transaction. That's securities fraud on the face of it. Yes. And and you wonder we think of where we fit in, in on this, and uh, you know these are what we talked about. What we've been talking about is how these are automated processes, and these are patents. And these are uh, various uh, ways to, and patents are uh, different processes that bank that banking uses to uh, 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 run their operations, to manipulate stocks, to manipulate bonds, to uh, manipulate credit analysis, to ma- manipulate risk analysis, to manipulate uh, a, a comp- the appearance of compliance. And uh, um, and we are and what we are is because our signatures are so important here because it's our it's our signature on that that document that they're holding us to as the principal obligor. Uh, we are run through all these various patents as the data and information in these processes, which could be anywhere from like I said, loan origination to some sort of a derivative uh, hedge uh, 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 asset or, or, or um, uh, plan or scheme. And uh, and interestingly enough, the United States Patent and Trademarks Office is under the Department of Commerce. So basically what they've done is they've injected us into these commercial transactions, and therefore mm-hmm. what we are is we're a merchant, and we're expected to know what, what, uh, uh, what's, what's taking place here, and we don't. And why don't we? Because we were never informed of all these other uh, uh, nuances, as we say, uh, that are taking place insofar as the transaction itself and insofar as the automation. We're, we're geared, we're manipulated into believing that these are simple, negotiable instruments, and they're not. And they have taken standard form, Fanny, Freddy, Ginny, Sally, and they've hidden all this within that structure. And that's yes. what the, uh, was deceptive about it, because at, at the in, at the uh, at the core of the contract, in the right to contract, you have to understand exactly the ringer that you're going to be put through, and they have concealed all that. Yes, yes, yes. I, and, and and the thing about it, and they've done it very well. <laughs> they, they've done it very, very well. This is this is a fine tuned sophisticated animal folks i mean this is something that was years in the planning and it, it six, cost them 6.1 billion dollars to buy all the laws they needed from congress to or all the deregulatory policies from congress to be able to do these things and right. uh, uh what we're dealing with here is we're, it, it is a very complex issue but when it comes down to it what we're dealing here is, is everything comes back to the transaction everything so I kind of want to shift the conversation a little bit to, to talk about well, this, this foreclosure defense and, and this, 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 um, this, this impression of this false, this false uh, uh, um, uh, fabrication that, that we have a mortgage loan and that when we're served with a default, our natural inclination, of course, is to, to defend that fault. And defend, uh, but when we defend a default, we're uh, affirming that there's a debt, and that's, that's, we're, we're going line and step where they everybody. want us to go. Pardon me? They trip everybody up that way by yes, they uh, do. by validating the debt. Yes, by validating the debt, you pretty much hung yourself at that point in time, um, and, and, it, it, and at that point, and, and you're done at that point in time, and that's where we're done. Uh, so what we've got to do is we we have to we have to realize and we have to kind of educate ourselves. Um, we have to become sophisticated. Um, we were made Ill- we were quite literally made illiterate by these transactions because so much has been withheld from us. You know, the person that we were sitting across on the other side, uh, the broker, the lender, uh, they, you know, they, they didn't really know what 
they were they they believe most of them. Well, Liz can attest to this. She can she can tell a story about the lender. She didn't know what was going on, but yet she she questioned the accounting of it. Why don't you tell that story, Liz? Well, I, I just recall being, uh, you know, once a year we were at convention, and, of course, all the wholesalers would come in, and they'd give us all the bells and whistles of their newest and latest and greatest products, regardless of whether it was a security, um, an investment program mm-hmm. or, you know, a blended program or whatever it was. And I remember when the wholesaler came in and started talking about these option arm loans, um, and this is mm. brand new. Mm-hmm. And it was a, a way of tying the in the mortgage to the uh, market, and um, we were of course we were all very well aware of the underwriting guidelines, and you know be careful to be truthful in your applications because to report something falsely, whether it was to your benefit or otherwise, is fraudulent, and you could there's jail time for that. And um, I remember we were sitting in the auditorium listening to this presentation of these option arm loans, and I was a loan supervisor, and there were a bunch of us mm-hmm. that were loan supervisors that were sitting there. And here they're talking about these basically liar loans. And we just kind of looked at each other and said, this doesn't sound right. And we were just all sure, well, yeah, things are just changing, and they were trying to accommodate this, because, you know, the baby boomer, you know, they, they use baby boomers as a as a selling point for everything. You know, we've got this massive influx of new business coming because the baby boomers are becoming of age and they're all going to be getting properties. And, you know, we're, it was just such a – it was such a rush to get us to sign on board. And, of course, we right. just kind of did what we, what we were told because we were assured that – the you know it was legal it was acceptable it was best practices you know all of those things and then of course I think it was about 1990 I want to say 1997 we started uh, you know some of the wholesalers started pulling out of the option arm market hmm. and that was the that was the warning bell things were about to go south and they did rapidly. Yeah, and then they went. Yeah. So, and then that was right before all the uh, new laws came into being, and uh, that was before. Uh, well, that, that 1997. You said that was a year before uh, State Street versus uh, Signature Financial Group, which which uh, 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 made patents or made these business processes patentable, and uh, that's when things really went south. That's when things just could completely went in a totally different direction. Uh, but Liz, I want you to talk about the um, the accounting end of this. Um, how you question it, how you kind of how you guys kind of scratch your head about well Alice in Wonderland your Alice in Wonderland story. <laughs> oh, okay, my old too many stories. Um, it's well when you when you apply for a loan, you know you fill out the application and it's been a long time since I sat in front of a of a of a application. Um, I've been out of the business for well since two thousand and four. But um, I remember looking at this ledger and or at the application, and they're listing certain entries as a credit and certain entries as a debit. And it was really um, counterintuitive because you would think that an entry that was coming into your account would be a credit, but they counted it as a debit, and anything going to them was a credit, something like that. Very I, cool. I, I, should, I, uh-huh. I, no, I, I mean, very interesting. Well, that's Sorry, go ahead, Liz. No, I was just going to say, it's, well, I should have an application in front of me and I'd be giving a better description of it. But it, it's very counterintuitive because it, it's all based on who the secure creditor is. Of course, back in those days, and even still today, those uh, lenders don't talk about that, who is the secure party and of course, when they go in and they're doing their their little uh, shenanigans with foreclosure, you know, you see that word frequently about being a secure creditor. And uh, but they don't tell you what that is, and that that I think all goes to this. And this is what I call Alice in Wonderland because what you think is a credit is really a debit, but it's only a debit because of their little fantasy world that they put us in. It's really diabolical. Yes, it is, and it, it really accelerated with uh, uh, well, 2004 when you got out of the industry. That was about a year before 
Uh, they what I say, what I call flipping the switch and all the automation. Um, 2004, there was still there was you know the, the standards were loosening, but at the same time there were still you know the standards were still in place. And what I mean by standards is you know you fill out an application, you still you you, they, you accept documents, or you have to give over documents, your tax returns, and you know your your banking receipts, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then it's verified, and uh, uh, whether you get a loan or not, whether you're qualified for a loan or not. Well. Mid 2000, so you got out about a year early before they flipped the switch, which was really about uh, about uh, September of 2005. Uh, Merrill Lynch had uh, purchased uh, 20 percent uh, an active equity share of Own It Mortgage. Now the CEO of Own It Mortgage, William Dallas, he's uh, he's a diabolical uh, he's a diabolical character, and he was all about automation. And uh, if you read any any histories on this particular individual. And he's very vocal within within the industry, and writes. And I think he writes for Mortgage Originating News. And he was he he warned us. He told us what was going on, what was coming coming forward. That that we were getting into uh, automated type systems, and we were not getting that, and that we were not getting into mortgage lending anymore. But we were getting into uh, vendor transactions and licensing transactions. And these are all the conversations that that were taking place within the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 and you can verify this by going into the industry periodicals, which is a great thing to do to really research and find out what they were doing and what they were setting up for us and anyhow um so merrill lynch bought into own it about september of uh, 2005 and uh as soon as they bought into own it they basically and they brought in uh, uh mike blum from merrill lynch i think it was the global uh, um trading securities uh, division of, uh, of Merrill Lynch, and they brought in a couple other people from Merrill Lynch into own its offices, and they abandoned standards. They just dropped all the standards, and they increased their stated income loans, and uh, Merrill Lynch ordered that they wanted a higher uh, average rated coupon. Now, they didn't just do this with own it. They did this with all of their origination lines and the warehouse lines. Uh, they did it to Resume. They did it to People's Choice. They did it to MLN Network and, and several others. And not within a year's time or two years' time, all these guys started going bankrupted. And why they go bankrupted? They went bankrupted because Merrill Lynch called the margin on them. And this kind of goes back to what Liz was talking about with uh, the ratings on the insurances and whatnot and what they're putting down for their values. Uh, so what, mm-hmm. what, what they were doing was they were doing margin betting. And so when, when the margin call was made, it forced the originators to go under. Now, interesting with uh, um, uh, Bill Dallas, when he was talking about all this automation that was going to be integrated, he was saying that servicers have to develop new ways to be able to collect on these loans and that originators need to find their exit strategy. Well, their exit strategy was going bankrupted. Because when they went bankrupted, they'll, because we're dealing with financial products here, automated financial products like own its uh, um, a right loan or countrywide's clues or option one dares, we're dealing with their financial products. And those financial products, <laughs> it was brilliant the way they did this because when you go bankrupt, what happens to your products? It's pretty much worthless, right? All your copyrights and your trademarks are basically worthless because you're in the tank, right? Well, they were allowed, the bankruptcy court ordered them and allowed them to sell off their de minimis assets, which they sold off to a, to a connected party, so they would recover them on the other side of their bankruptcy. So, I mean, this is devious to the core. Right. And what struck me from what uh, Liz said about the creditor side, uh, uh, what was counterintuitive about the creditor, um, actually ties back to the original piece about depositing your collateral, depositing yes. your house to the bank, primarily because if the bank is if if the bank is accessing the collateral that you have deposited to it, you are now the lender to the bank, and so therefore, you know, the question is is uh, Liz uh, chime in and you know the secured creditor that everybody is confused over is actually the person that did, uh, deposited the collateral to the bank. And um, in the transaction, we uh, the first counterparty to the entire transaction is actually um, the person that brought the, uh, the property for deposit at the closing event. Yes. So the, the, the how that ties in is that the secured creditor, if they don't make a claim, for an accounting and a balancing of the books, they are abandoning their claim uh, 
Uh, and in that way, um, uh, basically... But basically a cancellation of debt at that point in time is really what yes. it is. It's a mm-hmm. cancellation of debt. Um, so right. this is where they reverse the books then, right, Donald? This is where they turn us, this is where they, turn, they, they slip from the REMIC into the REIT, and uh, of the REMIC, of course, being your loan trust, which, is, uh, uh, which yeah. cannot have any defaulted loans in whatsoever and has to fall to strict guidelines uh, to, to be a protected REMIC. Uh, but what they're doing is when a default occurs, they're, they're, they're switching the books, basically, uh, so that uh, 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 yes. they can, so, so that's a cancellation of debt income. Why are they doing that? They're doing that so they can stick us with the taxes. Right. Right. And then they can't. And then they, and this, these all these transactions all take place through the 1031 exchanges. So you've got. True. So, so, so you've got. So you've got your. Uh, so you've got your. Uh, um, uh, at, at your clearing stage, you've got several parties that are that are all that are that that are there in all cases, all transactions. You have Bank of uh, you got uh, Boney, Bank of New York Mellon. Uh, you've got your DTC, which is a Depository Trust Corporation, and these are where. Uh, these uh, 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 notes that we sign, these alleged notes that we sign, these writers and entitlements and everything are posted. And mm-hmm. they're pledged to the DTC, and that's what they're tra- doing securities borrowing and trading on. And then you have the 1031s, which is at your kind of your, your county, uh, state, local level, where they're, selling, where they're reselling the same asset every 180 days. And at the, en- and at the end of the day, when it's time to liquidate mm-hmm. someone, it's liquidated through the 1031s, and that's where you see your 1099As and Cs come through and where it's an abandonment of property. And then they come back and hit you with all the deficiencies and the taxes. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a well-oiled machine. Yeah, when you're describing all that, I choked. <laughs> <laughs> you guys carry on. <laughs> I'll be right it, 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 it's a um, uh, so so what, so what we got to do here is we got we got to identify the problem. The problem we have here is that we we got so accustomed to uh, uh, this foreclosure defense, and and we're so bogged down by courts that that aren't listening, that aren't following the rule of law. And there's a lot of negativity out there. Obviously, um, I get some negativity on my page uh, because uh, I, I get, well, you know, we can't win in the courts, and we're never going to win in the courts. And and and, and uh, how are we going to, you know, what's the point? Well, what's the point then? You got to fight this stuff. You got to keep. Yeah, so you got to keep going. Can, yeah, you can't just. Sorry. Yes. Oh, I was saying, Ken, you and I talked about this one time. That you know, it, it's it's well and good to. To acknowledge that we're really facing a very strong uh, opponent, but our options are very small. I mean, either we do nothing and just lie down and let this thing roll over us, or we fight back and with the tools that you know that we have and that we're learning about that we have, um, because we may lose in the end, but. You know, if we're going to lose, at least let's lose standing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you can't. And we also talked about this. You can't. You can't. To me, and I say I, I say this phrase quite a bit: mixing apples and oranges. And that's what you're really doing here. I mean, you're talking about uh, uh, these are new, these are new issues that are coming out. These are new facts that are coming out. You know, this is the stuff that we're talking about here is not is not is not uh, any kind of conspiracy theory. It's not any kind of uh, a, a supposition. It's not pulled out of the air or pulled out of our you know what. It's it's documented fact. And uh, right. so what you have here is you've got you've got you've got a society that has really been beat down. I mean, especially the people in foreclosure. I mean, I know that because we're fighting that ourselves. You know, uh, and, and and so you know so 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 is uh, you, Liz, and and Donald, and and these are yeah. and that's what drags us into these yeah. things. And and you know, I'm, some people some people have some people have it in them to fight these things, and others don't. I understand that because it, it's it's a tremendously Tremendously uh, uh, heartbreaking situation. It's a, it's 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 defeatist situation. I mean, we get not only not only are people in foreclosure outcast by society. We got to deal with the crooked courts. We got to deal with servicers that are breaking into our people's homes while they're not home during the day and taking out all their all their goods and selling them and whatnot. So we're dealing oh. with a lot of things here. Yeah. The thing about you it know, though is that I'm sorry, Liz. Go ahead. No, go no no no. You go ahead. You you have the floor. The, the, thank you. Uh, the thing about it is that when you come at it from making a claim as a creditor because you have to 
deposited your asset for their use and that you're going to be requiring accounting of what they have done. Right. Um, it completely shifts the energy of what is going on. There is no... Uh, I, I want to see people drop the entire term foreclosure, primarily because that particular word, although you're going through it and it's a legal term, and people are going to, you know, the main thing we know about words is that there are certain words that just suck the energy out of you. Yes, and if that's you're going them. to understand it, that is the big word you want to drop. That and that. Because, first of all, you need to empower yourself with um, different words for what it is. First of all, you know, there there is such a thing as, I, I coined it, and I don't know if it's um, uh, as apropos, and it's wrongful repossession, right? Yeah. Um, and secondly, another word which actually has um, legal ramifications for what they for what has actually occurred in the deposit um event in the closing event is a is a concept called squatting and legally it's uh, and again I'm I am not an attorney however this particular theory uh ties into what they're actually doing with every time uh they have issued a um They've, they've engaged in a financing event. Um, and that is adverse possession. They are squatting on the title until they can flip the switch when you go after them defending the title by saying there's, you know, X number of reasons. And mind you, those are good and solid grounds that people are winning on in certain occasions, right? It doesn't, however, address... Uh, even in issues of when you hear of dismissals of cases and things like that, and then suddenly somebody, another zombie, you know, uh, debt collector emerges in your life and, and, I mean, shows up in your life, and, you know, you're going through the whole thing over again, mm -hmm. right? So how do you, how do you put a, a stake in the heart? It, well, you know, because it's an automated process, yeah, and they're passing the knife around every 180 days, you've got to be more, you know, and it's obvious that, you know, uh, they are taking all the pro se cases in the country and they're taking all the arguments and they've dialed it down to certain things that the judges are asking. So in the first place, when you're going to court and you're not uh, making the right claim, you're not going to get the court's ear. So you can't, you know, most people are blown out uh, 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 just by procedurals. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, failing to understand that, right? And secondly, we're wept. I mean, frankly, I've, um, we, we started off in this in 2006 when uh you know after the crash of the economy and i uh i we we got back into maybe investing you know the idea was to invest in um affordable foreclosure property uh, uh, uh and so we did that there were problems we saw in title and so um we were just dipping our toe into this thing and and it there were instances when it took months for title to, to actually clear. And um, so that was 2006. By 2008, you know, I was uh, introduced to a, a, a writer called, uh, an attorney who wrote about um, the banking challenges we're facing. And from Ellen Brown's perspective, she said there's a high probability that 60 million um, mortgages in the country were unenforceable. That's a, yeah, dialing, that's more, that's probably a lot. Dialing that forward. Uh -huh, sorry. Yeah, it's a lot more than that, too. You know, I mean, he's good. And she's right. And, well, and, and, they're, they're, they're doing reverse mortgages. That's the worst yeah, part. Yeah, right? you could almost, yes, because you know the what? whole you could idea almost, really... Yeah, uh -huh. you could almost sorry. describe it like that. Yes, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good uh, analogy. That's almost what they yep. are doing. So the whole idea is that what they're 
what is happening is that you know they they're really actually stripping the rights and the property rights of every person right uh through this to it, uh through just rigging the loans to fail through the arms that Liz talked about. Um, and then, you know, dialing forward and seeing the real success, I mean, the, 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 the powerful successes that April Chani and Max Gardner and East Coast were having. I mean, those were basically theories back then which were very fu- fundamental to the issue, which is like, what is the chain of title to, what established your claim to the chain of title? It's still a valid argument, and right. I believe that what we have is an ability to tie the accounting over to the chain of title issue and really, you know, um, bring the game down. Right. Um, well, we can turn it around. See, and see, the yeah. problem is, and I agree with you, the chain of title issues are very valid. I mean, they're very valid arguments, I mean, if we're talking about real property, but the courts aren't. All the courts see and I think yeah. we all recognize this, is, is that you signed the documents, uh, you're responsible for the debt. It doesn't matter, and they don't, and they don't seem to care who, who's, de- who who's, who's, who's the holder of it or whose debt, who do you owe. It's just a simple and fact that, that you owe a debt. Right. And, and that's that the problem. Is, actually, it's also our responsibility to say, hey, you know, they are characterizing, characterizing this as a, uh, uh, as a foreclosure. Right and, and right. yet, and see, it, come, it, it comes down to what they've done. They, they've hidden the main part of the transaction from us. They, well, they, hit, they, they, they hid the actual characterization of what this transaction entirely is. It's not a mortgage loan. It's an investments contract, and it is a right. basket of securities exactly. and entitlements. It's everything that 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 you that you don't think it is or never thought it would be. It's not the right. simple and little traditional mortgage. No, it's not, and that's where their entire argument will break down, primarily because when you come back down to the contract, they are actually using UCC3, which actually is pertinent to unsecured debt. And there's a reason they're going with unsecured debt through there, right? Uh-huh. Mainly because the switcheroo is between the securities and the, uh, and the unsecured collateral, which they have to put it down as in order to reconcile their books. And, you know, it's that little sh- uh, 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 shift between UCC-8 and UCC-9, as right. you've been talking about, right. that is a challenge, right? And, right, right. That's uh, right. Well, and it's also that they're not bringing all the documents in. You know, you've got that. We talk about this borrower certification authorization form, and uh, that is a document that is within our closing documents. And the uh, uh, the foreclosure mills aren't bringing this into court as part of their as part of their claim uh, to foreclosure under a under a UCC three instrument, uh, and they're not bringing it in for a reason because what what this what this borrower certification authorization form is it's basically a securities bearer bond, and it's more than that. It's basically what's well, essentially your 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 uh, uh, signature to slavery. Because we did not know, we were not made aware that what we were not that we were given up was not we were we weren't getting rights in property. What we were given up was all rights in our property, which are your per, real per, our real property, of course, our personal property and intellectually derived property, and that is all of right. these derivatives and all of these uh, um, uh, um, uh, structured investments and hedge funds and all these all these manipulative uh, types right. of transactions and patents and processes that we weren't aware of. A mortgage loan is supposed to be static. It's not supposed to be a dynamic instrument. And me and Liz were talking about that earlier, weren't we? We sure were. Yeah, the, the, you know, when you get a loan, suppose, you know, and, and we're talking about a real loan, When in a contract there are certain things that are required to be present simultaneously, and there has to be agreement informed consent, there has to be consideration, you know, all of those elements. Yes, the those elements. The thing that's missing is the thing that's missing mm-hmm. in these transactions is being informed. Yes. yes. Uh, and along with that, um, the, there's the fine point that uh, the very financing application itself is taken up to the Federal Reserve which basically is a um, is an authorization for them to go ahead and you know if all the underwriting criteria quote unquote is in line um, basically 
the question is, uh, is a is a warehouse loan even considered? Uh, 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 you know, a, where is the consideration and their skin in the game when it is a, flat, a warehouse line that they are extending? Right. Yep. Yep. Well, see what it what it boils down to. What it boils down to is they, they lured us into – they pulled a fast one on us, and they did a very good job of doing it. They lured us into uh, signing over si- – signing a legal ownership, taking legal ownership of a financial asset so that they can take it from us and capitalize it at full amortized value, and they can disguise it and hide this all these transactions behind the, the, uh, the face of Morris Electronic Registration Systems or MERS. So MERS puts a cloud on its title. So when you were talking about title before, Donald, um, you know, you got two different kinds of title. You got documentary title and you got electronic title. Well, right. you know, when you when you when they're when they're reselling these things time and time again, that's all electronic titling. And this is all concealed behind uh, MERS. Now a lot of people think MERS uh, uh, people have a misconception about MERS and it, and it drives me nuts when people say that MERS owes the county millions of dollars in fees. I think I, I think and I think you'll agree with me now, Donald. That's not true. Uh, they, they don't owe they don't owe uh, the, the county uh, anything. Uh, they're required just to make that initial recording, and then anything after that is not applicable to assignments of real property. And this is applicable to something else that we're not made aware of in, this, in these mortgage loan agreements. And that's that MERS is a trademark, and trademarks assign and convey entirely differently than real property does. And so, you know, when, when you're going to court and you're making these arguments about change of title, is it because we're not bringing up, maybe, maybe that's the issue we need to bring up. We need to bring up the issue that this is a trademark and this has nothing to do with real property and expose the fraud that way. If you're, if you're intent on, on defending against foreclosures, that's another way to go at this. Hey, but Ken, Liz, this is Kyler. Ken, this is Kyler Davenport. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You? Uh, yeah, I wanted to... I wanted to pop in here a moment. You read it. Uh oh. Tyler? Oh, we lose him? I think so. Uh oh. Tyler, are you there? Liz, you still there? I'm here. I'm here. I mean, Liz is here. I'm here. Yeah. Tyler? There you go. Yes. I'm here, I'm Tyler. I'm not here. I You're not here? Them. I'm here. Turn now. Yeah, now I can. Ken, I'm here. Okay, I can hear you. I'm sorry. A uh, couple of things. Y'all were talking about the complexities in court, and I wanted to bring up something on that. I was sued for $20 million on a case uh, when I was undercover working in the governor's office, around the governor's office, undercover to help protect senior citizens uh, from abuse and neglect in Medicaid nursing homes and working on Medicare, Medicaid fraud cases. Mm -hmm. I was sued for $20 million. Woke up at 8 o'clock one morning, and uh, my producer said, uh, well, you've got yourself in one hell of a fix, uh, you know, pinky in the brain. (laughs) <laughs> You're being sued for twenty million dollars. Uh, do you have any representation? And I said, "Are you kidding me? Twenty million dollars? Let me get a cup of coffee and call you back." <laughs> That's like, Let me and, drink first. <laughs> uh, well, sure enough, we were being sued for twenty million dollars. My undercover team, part of them, had vanished and left the country. Uh, we were exposed undercover, and the other side sued us for twenty million. Now let me here's the point to this story. I went into court with thirty five lawyers mm-hmm. because I had one hell of a friend and I'm not going to mention his name. He's retired now, but I'm not going to mention his name. I'm not going to mention the firm's name. Uh I don't want people to get that close to me. But I had one hell of a friend and he was a partner in one of the largest firms in the United States. And he took me on and I had 35 lawyers by my side at all times, and I had at least 150 to 200 paralegals working with me, and we still had hell with this case. This was one of the largest cases in the United States that had ever came down the pike for this particular uh, civil, I'll call it a crime, I guess. We committed crimes of trespassing 
against the Texas nursing home industry. Now everybody can look me up. Hell, who cares? But uh, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I was saying. And one of the attorneys who worked there talked about casting spells, word spells. Now, here's what Donald brought up a while ago. A good point to segue into is words are spells. And before you all hang up and think I'm delusional, I want you to think about this. You know what alchemy is, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Words yes. are spells. You know what you you know what quantum physics is all about, the basics of quantum physics. Words are spells. Yes. You can put spells on people with words. If they accept those words, they do not understand the root meanings of those words and where those words came from, uh talking about legal ease. You can literally cast a spell, and again, I'm going to apologize for sounding insane, but you can cast a spell, and that's what legal ease is. It's casting a spell upon the victims. Well, essentially, yeah, yeah and, and that's one of those words that were, that, that, the, the word foreclosure, the word debt. That is, that's a, that is a spell. It's a, it's a, it's a defeatist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it has to sh- in spell order to upon the victim. I know this is taking it into the new age tonight, but I don't want to stick there. But I do want you all to understand. Oh, Donald, no, you got, well, you got a good point, though. And, and you, got, you got a great point because that's what a lot of this <laughs> is. You. A lot of this yeah. is a lot of this is uh, predetermined uh, or prejudging or stereotyping based on on terms. And that term is and it, uh, foreclosure is a very is a very defeatist and a very uh, detrimental term. It it, 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 it describes somebody that. Uh, ordinarily might be uh, uh, not financially responsible or uh, um, uh, uh, a deadbeat. And, okay, and, and, and that's right. had a lot uh-huh. to do with all this stuff. And yet, I'm back you on know, now. Can you and, unmute me? You're good. We hear you. Go Hello? ahead, Donald. What were you saying? Yeah. Um, base, yes. Go on, well, I of. can't hear them again. Okay, go ahead, Donald. Um. Good point. Sorry, I got lost, up. guys. I'm not talking over you, I hope. But uh, go Are ahead and continue your conversation. We're having a few technical difficulties here, as usual, but uh, just continue on, and I'll get, try to get back in in a moment. Okay. Liz, you're quiet. What? what are you you're on? quiet. How do we change this? How do we turn this around, Liz? How do we, how do we get people to <laughs> – How do we talked about this earlier. How do we get people to, to, <laughs> to turn away from foreclosure and, and to look right. into the future and, and to, to, to kind of drop this? This what I call silly nonsense of foreclosure because that's really what it is. I was gonna well, I was gonna ask you all as the devil's advocate, Lisa and uh, Ken Donald, how do you propose? What kind of solutions do you propose to this? I would ask you why you haven't gotten together and found an angel to invest a couple of hundred thousand dollars in five billboards to bring this out. I'll go to the media together with you know five hundred or so of you all. Go to the media, pick at the front door of the media, make them listen to you. Anything. Just get creative. Now, what are you doing to get this word beyond what I call radio and talks to you and some of these other alternative medias? Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying we're trying to raise awareness, first of all. I mean by ra- I mean and Don Donald can address this with emerge. Um we're trying to yeah. get uh, the, the the basic focus, at least from my point of view, is uh, education and awareness. And uh, is to uh, is to get what, 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 what if the daycare what if the daycare center was molesting kids and having a good time with them all day? We would have ten thousand people down there picketing tomorrow morning. Well, of course you would. Of course you would. Time. Of course you would. But you got what you got here is you got people you, you got people that are in foreclosure that have been isolated and cast out and cast They're out of society. Hurt. So you've got to integrate this somehow. So you integrate it. So, so you have to integrate. You have to break it. Yeah, I agree. You have to break it in the mainstream here, and that's what we. That's what we're trying to do. Is trying to right. trying to build a build a, a a reputation or build a build a, a momentum here. And but what we need though also is we need people to uh, 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 stop this foreclosure defense and to go on uh, the offensive here and try and do some research because you. But. You take this, these mm-hmm. are time-consuming things, and Liz, you addressed this. We talked about this earlier about how do you change people's perspective and how do you break us into the public. But well, Jen, it's overwhelming. Lisa, it's overwhelming, please. I just want you know I, I'm on. I mean, I'm getting a lot of feedback from uh, from you, Kyler. I can't 
understand a lot of what you're saying. I, I apologize. The producer, the producer is now muted. So I was just going to say, Liz, go ahead. Oh well, I, there's um, there are a number of strategies out there, and um, I, you see what I see. You know, I'm on social media almost every day, and I read the comments. You know, b- both on Ken's page and and other group sites, and and from my feed that comes in, you know, these comments flow back and forth between agreement with a solution and outright denial of of uh, of another solution as being efficacious, and it just seems really um, obvious to me that you know, well, what we first of all, what we have to realize is in that is that if our ac- country's economy is going to recover. It will only be because, you know, we all took a small part in seeking and applying a remedy to the fraud that really sabotaged it in the first place. And um, until and unless we put an end to the negativity that is mm-hmm. out there, and, and there's so much of it, we really need to, I hate, I hate that kind of that uh, reset button concept that uh, was so um, so much in vogue for a time. But I think, first of all, there has to be an attitude adjustment that, uh, you know, and, and a realization that, you know, we're all on the same team here. We're, um, and, you know, one method is going to work better for some than it will for others, you know. But in all cases, we're dealing with a fraud of the kind we have never seen before. And it's really blatant. And the reason we haven't seen it before is because it's never been identified. And Ken has identified it. You know, those let me, who are at the let me, bottom let me, of the... let me, Liz, let me ask you this. Have you and Ken and Donald ever gotten together and went to a person, a family with two children who are being foreclosed on, and sit down with them and taken them all the way through the process? Ken and I have talked about this and won in court because this is such fraud. If, in fact, it is fraud, have you won in court? Have you got any friends that have won in court that you can show as an example? These, strong... are, these are all, these are all new pi- these are all new things that are just coming out now. These are things, and well, that's the purpose of putting this out there is to uh, is is to generate the interest, generate the talk in this, and to get. And frankly, we need you have to have legal. We got to turn some attorneys our direction, and and, and Donald and I are doing that with uh, uh, with Scott Staffney in Washington. And 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 that is what I have been constructing Emerge um, for. Um, we saw the need for a movement to really actually coordinate the technology back, I mean, to coordinate the action across the country with a singular uh, message. So Emerge in the end is going to actually um, be a framework which is going to assist uh, families you are speaking about in affording their action. And also we... We've been test mo- uh, test driving the model since 2012, and I've got a you know uh, full disclosure again. I'm going to repeat. I'm actually um, I put myself through the process of of of, of challenging the bank's authority again um, just recently, mainly because they gave me a modification, and you know, uh, and so I'm the poster boy for. I'm the poster boy for somebody that's received the modification that's going to challenge the bank to say, what authority did you have to offer this? These are, I don't mean to cut you off, Bob, but I want to just address Kyler's point a little bit more directly, if I may, um, that uh, these, are, these are new things that are coming out. These are, these are all new uh, uh, facts that, are be, that, that, that I'm revealing and putting out there and exposing, and these are things that are so, car- so, so covered over, uh, and you're dealing with a society that, is, that is, has their blinders on and has so been, has been so deceived and so uh, uh, manipulated that you got We've got to direct people's attention. Now, how we do that, that's a good question. That's what we're working on. We're finding remember, strategies to do that. Sorry? Remember tonight, remember tonight, I'm playing the devil's advocate now with you because I want to play the devil's advocate. You all need a devil's advocate. You all need somebody on air tonight, right now, at this time in the, in the 804 time zone here that's going to question you as a common person would, a commoner, coming on mm-hmm. my first response would be oh my god oh my god what this is happening I, this has been yeah happening? i, I 
Well, yeah, it, well, you know, it, that's what I, I say. You know, it's the first thing everybody, oh, these guys are kooks. These people are nuts. You know, and I'll say to you, I'll say, I'll tell anybody, I'll the say. The documentation is I'll right there. I'll throw down the documentate the, cri- the crime scene. Right. The documentation for everything that they've done, the entire blueprint for everything right. that we've talked about here this evening, and much, 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 much more, is you know, the, written you know in their the own experts. hands. And it's, very, you know, and it's the you know, crime scene. It, go ahead. You know who the experts are in this particular subject? They're in Scotland. In Scotland? Did you know that? <laughs> uh, They're in no, Scotland. I didn't know that. Yes. They are in Scotland, yes. Oh, you they mean Iceland, the, the guys that threw them in the banksters in the jail. No, no, I'm talking about Scotland. They are the experts on your subject. If I can bring some of them back to me, they got mad at me for doing a sh- anti-Muslim show, and I lost contact with them. They threw me off the air in Scotland because I predicted the Paris fallout. I predicted the 9-11. I predicted all of these other things that were happening around the world, and they got scared. Scott, Scottish, The Scottish are very terrified of any backlash from anyone anywhere in Ireland, Scotland, and they threw me off the air in midstream, and I had some of the uh, most intense conversations about what you all are talking about. I mean, they are the the experts in this field. Uh, I, I, I only hope I can bring back two or three to put in y'all's circle mm-hmm. to give you oh, some yes. insight. Well, yes, this, this needs a mass, this needs a mass infusion of, uh, of, of people to elevate this to a level it, that is... That, that 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 breaks that breaks a veil and uh, uh, breaks into the public. Now, uh, by talking about it as we're talking about it, even if we reach a handful of people today, even if we're, I think the people that we want to reach the most uh, is uh, the people that are paying their mortgage, the people that 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 aren't having the problems of foreclosure, and reach out to them right. uh, and because these, yeah. these these same people are the people that are still struggling to find a way to put their kids through college, struggling to put gas in their car. They're not doing any better, and uh, so to reach out to them and say, look. Uh, we're not talking about uh, just people in foreclosure. We're not talking about, even about uh, just more mortgages. We're talking about Sally Mae. We're talking about all credit. We're talking about the entire economy that that we've been that has been manipulated and is being robbed from. So it really, right. this is a grassroots effort that is to, to integrate other people to and then people. It's, it's going to be people that changes this thing. That changes this and turns the course. And you know, of this I was thing. thinking. It's not, gonna be a handful of court, it's not going to be a handful of cases in, in, in court. It's going to be a mass infusion of people that, that, that drop this foreclosure and go after these guys in the offense that stuns the courts. That's what's going to turn this thing yeah. around. People well, in the know, vaccine. The uh, go ahead, Liz. Go, I was just, well, I was just saying, go ahead, Liz. You know, this, what we're talking now is really uh, we're kind of shifting into marketing strategy because we, we're looking to reach out to, um, you know, certainly people that are in foreclosure are in distress and, and they need some assistance. But, you know, there are people, and I think there are some smart people out there that recognize that they could be next on the chopping block. And those are the ones that oh, yeah. will, uh, I think, give us an ear. And um, and if we can show them going in on the front end how these contracts were put together fraudulently, um, we could have... You know, maybe a possibility of even going in administrative method. Um, but, but Lisa, let me Lisa, involved. let me ask you, Liz, Lisa, let me Lisa. ask you, how would you go about doing that, Liz? I'm sorry, Liz. How would you go about doing that, Liz? Would you advertise that? Would you say, and would you bring Dot? Would you bring uh, uh, the rest of the team in and work with a couple of those people to see if you could get a model for your marketing a model to put out there? I, I'm well, try, uh, these are all things that we would have to give some thought and some consideration to. Certainly, um, you know, uh, local churches, uh, they are very well aware of people who are in distress, and there are professional people that I belong to a, a very large mega church, um, not Joe Olstein, but mm-hmm. it's a very large church. Uh, a church that's very community minded and very much um um they're, they're not prosperity gospel that kind of of thing but they certainly Thanks. are Thanks. aware that there are people that need help and they also have people who have means who have um financial wherewithal uh that would be willing i think to sit in and listen to um, the kind of fraud that uh, who would even conceive of 
Yeah. Well, what what is needed here eventually is 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 a large organization. A large infusion of cash would be very nice to set up an organization that that we can structure different various programs around and education programs as well as uh, bring in legal resources such as attorneys like Gene Keating or, or Scott Staffney, both of whom we're talking to and both of whom are are are, say, are seeing that hey, we got some we got some plausible cases here to look at. We got a plausible means that we can turn this thing around. But yes, I agree. This is it, it is it's. It's a daunting task, uh, Kyler. I absolutely agree. Uh, uh, it's a daunting task that, 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 is, that we're starting out at grassroots, but the, the, the point of the matter is what we've got here is we've got solid evidence, we've got solid facts, we've got a, a solid ping-pong ball that has no holes in it that these guys, uh, we can nail these guys to the wall for frauds, unbelievable frauds. Uh, it is, it, the, 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 the goal or mission, I think, at this point in time is, okay, how do we direct that? Where do we direct that? How do we centralize an organization or many, perhaps many organizations like Donald's Emerge? And how do we grow these programs so that we can get the word out there and that we can get the resources that we need to, because cause, let's face it, I mean, there's not, are no attorneys, there's very few attorneys out there that are on consumer borrower's side. Uh, it's just, right, <laughs> there's no money right, in it. Right, right, right. Right. Well, what about that, common it. law? Where does common where does common law fit into all of this? Can any of you answer me on that? Where does common law that's fit the, in? Oh, law? administrative method. Uh, the, that the is exactly the. Uh, yeah. Have you done the administrative procedure? Liz, uh, I'm in the process right Liz? now. Yeah, that is described. Great. We were and, talking about it earlier. Uh, right. I'm in the process right now, and. Um, uh, they have ignored each and every one of the affidavits that we have sent to them by so certified explain what mail. The affidavit, explain what you're doing. Well, it's the administrative... I don't know how to do, I wasn't prepared to do this, but basically <laughs> the, administrative, the administrative method uh, basically takes the controversy off the table, so it takes it out of the courtroom setting. So basically what we're doing is we're going in there and saying, well, okay, I tell you what, we will uh, we uh, will acquiesce. All we want you to do is to validate that you own the debt because according to UCC3, which is what they're using, or wait, is it UCC3? It might be 9. They have to, uh, they have, to have beneficial ownership in the note in order to foreclose. So they have to prove that they own the note. If they can't prove that they own the note, then at, at least in the state that I live in, uh, they they are not qualified to, uh, they have no jurisdiction. But the, court, so the courts anyway, are still ignoring that, though, from the court perspective. That's true. But but this is a being, uh, we're, we're not in the courtroom setting right now. Right. So, um I'm in the process right now of getting ready to file for satisfaction because they have basically they have ignored every affidavit. Under a blanket. Mm-hmm. Pardon me. They have defaulted on the on the on the reply. Yeah. Well, they've, they've, uh, there's a principle of law that stipulates it's called res judica, judicata. Mm-hmm. An unrebutted affidavit stands as fact in a court of law. It, the, the judge doesn't even rule on the, on the evidence because that's just that's what ju, uh, res judicata says. If, if they do not, Liz, Liz, are you telling me, Liz, that anyone can come in and foreclose and not necessarily be holder? Oh yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. absolutely, well, and, 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 they, and, and they do that, that was, and, they, and they do. Hell, and they do, how in the hell did they ever allow that to happen? How in the hell because did that you got ever... A, because you've got that, a unilateral well, contract, that's why. you got a unilateral well, Tyler, contract, and everything is held back to the principal obligor, which is, which, which is us, the signers. That's the only signatory to those agreements. So what that allows them to do now, because we're not dealing with a traditional mortgage, we're dealing with, a, with an electronic signature, an electronic uh, copyright derivative, yeah. so they could sell it like a yes. book. They're selling it multiple yes. times over. So, yes, okay. anybody can come back at you and try to foreclose on you, and they'll probably ahead, get away Donald. with it. Go ahead, Donald. Oh, great. Um, dialing back to a couple of points, um, that is the one of the key issues that they got 
uh, that they have in front of a lot of state supreme courts, you know, do you have to produce the note in order to be able, the blue ink note that everybody talks about? Right. And pretty much yeah. like in, 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 in Arizona, for example, um, they pretty much said you could just show up with a electronic copy of the deed of trust and as long as, you know, it shows that the uh, principal obligor's signature is on it, right. um, you're good to go. Well, this goes the, back to UCC3, though. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the Supreme Court, after passing that, effectively said, whoa, hold on. You can only do that if you actually do prove that you have beneficial interest, like Liz was saying. So um, uh, a lot of people uh, don't, are not aware of that. However, it's actually become a fine point uh, where, you know, mm-hmm. which a lot of attorneys around the country who aren't aware of what's going on, um, you know, uh, once they once they run up against arguments like successor by merger and everything else, they just lay over, uh, lay down and die, right? Well, the one thing and, about and get rolled over. The one thing about UCC three that they hinge on that we can't get around, as I see it, is is that uh, the, the uh, UCC three to bearer. Uh, and, and in blank, and there's no way that we can get around that because that basically and really yeah. is says that a, that even a thief can take your house. I mean, I've, how many times have we seen that characterized right. in, in legal right. reviews that we've read or legal analysis of, uh, of UCC three and this this, this, this uh, notion of uh, uh, to bearer? It is truly that even a, even a thief can steal your house. So those, so the, that's the that's the main problem with this foreclosure defense. You have to get it out of UCC three, and by them keeping it in UCC three, we will never win. So we, the only exactly. way to win this thing is to take it out of this out of this foreclosure, that word, that word we should never use, and debt that we should never use, take it back to the contract. Take it back to what where the do contract they, is. Sorry? Where do they sit around, Liz, where do they sit around, Liz, and talk about all of these things? In some big room somewhere or at the conventions you were talking about where people come together at the symposiums? Is that where all of this uh, yakety yak comes together and they figure out all of these intricate ways to screw the public? Oh, Silicon no, I think, Valley. Or are they... all, and I think it happens all, a lot uh, earlier than, you know, convention is, is the launch pad. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 they mm-hmm. come up with this. I'm sure that the, these things are uh, rolled out in terms of, of discussion as, as proposals a year or two before they actually bring it to the yeah. um well, I could say, I could tell you where they get it from. What they where they get it from is they went to, they went to Harvard, they went to MIT, uh, they went to Silicon Valley, and they uh, brought they they got the the brightest young minds to engineer uh, processes for right. them. And, and that's what yeah. they've done. And, and, and I've seen many, several interviews. I remember seeing an interview about a year ago. Uh, was, I think it was with an MIT grad that he he didn't want his face being uh, disclosed at all. He was petrified because he was. And he, yeah. and he said, "He goes, we did things that we knew were wrong uh, and uh, that are that are highly fraudulent, but we don't want to be identified. But we've done, and, that, and that's where this stems from. What this is, this all has to do with automation. It all has to do with uh, UCC nine and uh, um, uh, uh, secure transactions, and by collateralizing you, intellectual properties. And so that's what this all has to deal with. And what we think, what we're thinking another, about a paper document is ridiculous. Let me ask you another common devil's advocate question. Have you, any one of you, called the mainstream media and talked to a good reporter who wants to make a name for themselves like I've done a million times, uh, and it's tried worked? That. I've how, tried that a couple of times. How many of you have done uh, that? Liz, Donald, what about you? I have... Go on, Liz, you first. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, please, please. I insist. Oh, well, I was going to say no, I have not because, um, you know, I want to test this. You know, I'm using, I'm the the guinea pig here. I want to see how this rolls out for me. Right, Um, right. And once, once I have my own success story to tell, that's what I was after. Uh, That's what I was after. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, right. I think all three of us are going through it, that. Uh, I think well, all, all three of us are test, test driving the water. In my own case, I'm test driving the waters. I'm going in on, a, exactly. uh, uh, on the installment lease and uh, seeing how that goes. I know of a case here in, in Oregon I just, that, 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 uh, that's this past week 
just submitted a, a, um, a, a, a affirmative defense against Bank of America uh, on the on the installment lease uh, uh, theory, legal theory, and we'll see where that goes. Uh, so there is a case out there that is in, that is in test waters right now. Uh, there's uh, other cases that are going to be put, being put into play as we further develop, as Donald and I further further develop. Uh, uh, issues with Scott Staffney, uh, a very well-known attorney out of Washington. I've been talking to uh, Gene Keating, who is very, very well-respected in areas right. of finance. And as a matter of fact, him and I yesterday to... spoke for three hours and dissected this uh, uh, the contract in every every aspect whatsoever. In every instance, uh, it, it came back as uh, his, his the response was fraud, fraud, fraud. As a matter of fact, he described it as a cluster f u you know of fraud. Of more and right. more fraud. So I mean, so 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 the attorneys are looking at these things that, that that we're dealing with now, and they're seeing that hey, you know, this this we got to dump this whole strategy. So we are integrating these things into the court. Of course, it's going to take time, but the right. more that we, the more people that do integrate this in, the better chance we have of beating this because we know the courts are are corrupt. We know the courts are crooked. We know that one or two cases of this is not going to fly. But if you have a thousand cases of uh, of these same kinds of uh, of, of claims, uh, it, it's going to stump the court, and that, uh, that's where we that's where we get our victories. And if we can get some mass joinders going, which eventually will uh, happen, then that's where we start to make some uh, leaps and bounds here. H, yeah, and I'm going to add to that. Uh, Emerge has actually been test driving our model since about 2012. I, you know, I handed off some research to uh, one of my clients in Utah. We now have teams in Virginia, Florida, Arizona. And, you know, I, I look to Utah a lot because um, what we've done is ever since I, uh, when, when, like Liz, I'm test driving, we have been test driving strategies that actually work. And, you know, the, the, the work I, I handed off from my team basically shut down a 30 month long foreclosure from, uh, for my clients. And then it's now 44 months that I've been sort of like providing general strategy. We actually have, uh, attorneys uh, 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 in Utah and you know from 2012 and handing off my work we're now consulting on a Supreme Court case where Utah Supreme Court ruled in favor of the property owner and uh, Fannie Mae is trying uh, it, it, it is blocking discovery as to where they obtain change of title so there are various things that are actually um, happening in the background and like Liz um, I also um, test drove an administrative procedure we actually have an administrative procedure which is really actually the, the, the conversation you must have uh, between you and the and, and the, the pretender bank um, in private and so um, those things have we're test driving ways to transition um, you know the final uh, stage that that uh, Liz is speaking about and um, that was where it was a uh, you know my, my partner in that process basically said to me uh, about when I first met her in 2010 there is no loan I always confused the heck out of me what she meant by that and she says look you know and sh what she meant was you deposited your asset to uh, the bank and the bank has taken that deposit up to the Federal Reserve and now they've got a voucher that says hey you know we have an open account with 10 times the amount of the deposit say for example my you know a loan of three point uh, uh, three hundred and forty thousand now with 10 times that you know is three point four million so the question is that you know is there even a loan primarily because that account was open in your name right and so everything was pre-funded up until they default you out at the far end. So those are the concepts that have to be brought to the to the court right. and, and, and say there was that, no basic take, loan. And you take yeah. that back to the to, to the uh, inception of the contract and, and the fact that these are exactly. installment leases. Then what do you have? Exactly. Now you're not in a borrower or lender situation. You're in a you're in an equal footing uh, situation in, in a lease because transaction. Because you're coming in as a sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, that's right. So Go ahead, I, 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 I think I stepped on you. I'm sorry, Donald. No, no, no. It was awesome. I mean, basically, we're saying to everybody now, and I'm so thrilled to be working with Ken because the first time I, you know, uh, effectively, while he was researching all this five years, uh, eight years ago, right, when you yeah, started? Yeah, eight years in the making. Uh, 
Yeah, and and here I was, you know, kind of like in, in out out there alone, you know, just figuring out what is the main thing we've got to do was dial down to the root of the issue, which is what is it that they're doing with the collateral and where are they getting their funding from? It looks like, you know, uh, whether it be from the Federal Reserve, the DTC, uh, there are different aspects of the transaction from what we can see that's actually wrapped into one closing event. Yeah. So, and, so, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. And, and, and now the you thing know, is, you know, Yeah, I was going to say that I was going to say that I'm so proud. I'm so proud to have you all on tonight. It's it's unbelievable what you're saying, and I've been around the block a few times. You know me. Uh, Y'all sound so articulate and and serious and mission oriented, and you've done your homework. You've done your research. Uh, You sound very professional. Uh, You're very calm. I'll accept Ken Dolph, but you're very very. Oh, come on, that's very, like very is coming through. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You're very calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> I think you should listen to me because I am the devil's advocate. I've been doing this 23 years. And, uh, you know, I, I swore to God, whoever she is, that I would never make another cause on the air. I would never grab another cause. I've got mental illness uh, cause. I've got the homeless over 60. I've got the vet camps. I've got the seniors that are abused, but I've taken this cause on. I'm going to make this the Ken Doss Network, you know, for mortgage fraud. I'm going to give you this network, and I'm going to give you your own show, and I hope you all can come on every week or at least twice a month so we can glean people in one place where we're not scattered out in a million directions. The biggest problem I see being a media consultant is that y'all are so scattered out. I know some of you may disagree, but I don't. I've looked at you. I've researched you. I've looked at each one of you. You're very scattered out, very scattered, very uh, diluted. Uh, I think if you come together in this network and you do a regular show where people can expect at least one of you to show up once a week, I can promise you through our cross-promotion project that we can bring many, 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 many people in to listen to you, and that word will spread through our cross-promotion project and through our 53 platforms at Alternative Public Radio International. So I think this is something that we need to talk about, and I think it's something you all need to think about rather than going on Tom, Dick, and Harry's show and Betty and John and Joe really have your own show here and still go on Tom, Dick, and Harry and Betty and Joe's show but uh, have this as a major landing point or airport. Well, it does need to be a landing spot. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think that I going on, on other shows, I think going on any, any show possible is, 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 is great, is, is wonderful. You have to do it. Have to do it. Absolutely. Sure, there, has, there, does have to be a, there does have to be a landing spot uh, from which to emanate yes. from, and, that, and that's one thing that is needed. Uh, and I agree with you. It is scattered right now. I mean, I started doing this, uh, I came out of my shell, if, if you will, I'm talking calm now, so I'll be, I won't get excited. <laughs> uh, I, was kidding uh, you. I, I was kidding. I was kidding you all ago. I know you were. I, no, I know. I get a little <laughs> off to me. I know. Everybody tells me, Ken, you got to slow down. You got to slow down. So I'm kind of trying to work on that. That's my. That's my. That's my New Year's resolution is to slow down a little bit. <laughs> I, I think I can't they guarantee. have technology to help with that, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, they, what? They, I don't know, man. Oh, it seems to be legal in Oregon. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, they got, we got, hey, you can smoke, you can smoke, a, you can smoke a big fat doobie before you come on air. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's legal here. I could go right down to my local store and pick up some if I wanted to, but then I might fall asleep. So. <laughs> then, well, you, then, then you'd be like, <laughs> then you'd be like, hey, man, this is like, uh, you know, it's like yeah. the Ken Doss thing, man, going on tonight. Man. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> Excuse me while I go eat some dinner. You know, this is, you know, this is just me. I already been trying some of that technology tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Not me, it, Liz. <laughs> Not me, Liz. You, you know, you know, I, I came, I came, 
I came on Facebook about maybe six months ago with this stuff. I mean, I, I, try, I tried bringing right. this out several years, about four or five years ago, and people thought I was, I got, I got, I got crucified for it. When I talked about patents and, and uh, um, automated processes, people looked at me like I was a freaking lunatic, you know. And so, when I, so I went back underground again, and I, I decided when I come out again, I'm going to make sure that, that I have all my I's dotted, my T's crossed, and, and I have a perfectly round ball, and I can prove everything I say and, and three times over, which I've done. I successfully have done that. Yes. So I've come out maybe on Facebook for six months now. So uh, and, and, and I couldn't be happier with the results thus far. I think that people are latching on to this. Yes, it is difficult to understand. Uh, it, it, it does take a learning curve. And, and unfortunately, nobody's going to hand it to you on a silver platter. It's not going to happen. Because what you've got here is you've got something that is completely different than anything that any of us has ever experienced or even have any knowledge of. That's how well hidden this stuff is. So at this point in time, I think it's I think it's growing good. I think it's taking off very good, and I think it needs to take off. Yes, yeah. it could take off even faster. But I mean, I love the people who are on my site. I love the, the people on my page because they are getting this, and they are taking mm-hmm. the time to understand this stuff. Like Donald and and Marjorie Albalar and uh, Liz here. I mean, and, 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 and Sherry Vince. I mean, all these people are are, are latching on this stuff. So we are growing, um, and this is something that Liz and I talked about earlier. Uh, people are going to grow at a different. Some people might never get this because. What you're dealing with here is you're dealing with something that is is out of the norm, and uh, it, it, it's completely out of the norm. So to even understand the concept of what is intellectual property, for some, they'll never get it. But as long as we can reach a certain number of people that do get it, then we can make a difference. You know, I, what I agree, Ken. Whatever, I don't think whatever. it's out of the norm. I don't think it's out of the norm at all, y'all. Go ahead, Liz. I don't think it's out of the oh, norm at all. I think you're wrong on that. Okay. I, what I was going to say is I, just, I think that the, what will speak loudest is outcomes. And when people start seeing results, uh, you know, we're going to start off slow. It'll be just like any other uh, graphical present, uh, presentation of, of business growth. And then we're going to hit a point where we're going to just go critical mass growth. Yeah. And we've got to be yeah, on that. Yeah, yes, that is. Well, yes. actually, I'm actually putting that piece together just in anticipation of that because you know uh, at the end of the day what is going to happen is that we're going to um, offer access um, we as a movement we have local chapters that you can actually fire up as emerge and in the back door of that is your uh, is a way for you to be able to actually you know reboot your life uh, with a way to assist people with um, compiling their cases, right? There's a lot of people out there that are actually well-meaning, and we have wept, uh, seriously wept over the years that they've yes. submitted, you know, their, their their PSA findings and all that. Now, mind you, my 2012 work was precisely about that, and, and um, my researcher actually has backdoor access, and we don't just rely on Bloomberg or SEC.gov or ABSnet. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the thing is that the quality of, of work that I handed off in 2012 and, you know, was basically based on, uh, was based on the PSA argument that, you know, it was never funded. And um, now we're finding that that may be, you know, who knows? Well, here, that, well uh, you got me coming along and saying throw out the PSA because it's, it's irrelevant yeah, well, to what we're talking about. It's actually irrelevant to the investors. So it actually yes. expanded the market for Emerge uh, and all its affiliates primarily because, you know, um, you've got to uh, – it may change the way that things are actually argued in the future. Right. But well, regardless of the, the research, the research is going. Uh, the research quality is different. Um, and we we have mm-hmm. wept when people have you know entered their re- what should have been just a roadmap to whether they had a case in the, in the court as evidence, and then having court, uh, the judges throw everything out. Well, the problem right? now is you throw no, there, nobody sure. knows anything because it's so well hidden. So you're throwing darts in the wind, basically. And well, uh, um, that's, think, that's one of yeah. the biggest problems because it, because every time I you think, try to get a response, every time you get try to get discovery, it's well that's a bank secrecy act. Well, guess what? Yeah, there are right. no bank and secrets. Not only that, that is the very basic. I'm sorry, Kyla, you needed uh, you you chimed in. 
I was right, just going to say that you you need to be. I was just going to say that you need to be able to articulate your message very well, and I think y'all have done a good job tonight. Me coming in as a novice, uh, me coming in as a person who has worked behind the scenes with these big multi-billion-dollar corporations in a different area, mm-hmm. trying to expose fraud. Y'all have come across tonight, and you should have asked me that, by the way. All three of you didn't think of that. How are you coming across? How are you coming oh. across? How are you delivering this message? You know, you you're delivering it very well. Uh, the, the only thing that I would change is you're throwing out a lot of BBS twenty four sixty sevens and two oh nine fives and fifty one twenty sixes, and I I just kill my board members when they do that. I just slam the mallet down when I'm chairing the board and say, "Shut the f up." <laughs> Nobody understands what, you know, the consumers are here, and they don't understand what the hell you're talking about. And I do that at every board meeting. I have to do it every single time because I've got a bunch of bureaucrats there spilling no out charming. numbers and names that well, you all know all of this. They well, again, that's why, that's, why, that's why we tie everything back to the contract. Everything when it, At the end of the day, what this all has to deal with is it's the, the agreement between a buyer and a seller. That's what this all has to deal people, with. Right. This doesn't have to you do could with win this whole game. You could win this whole game on the radio by proving yourselves to be what you've done tonight and then just saying this is fraud and this is what we're going to do about it. You could prove your whole case with my fans by just saying this is fraud, this is who we are, this is our professional background, and Ken Dost has had eight years, Lisa's had such and such, Donald said such and such, and you do the articulation you did tonight in a very professional way and just say, this is fraud, and here's what we're trying to do to eliminate this problem with the American public. And you would win, and you would have a show, as long as you don't bring up too many 20957B6s and 2465-9s. <laughs> if you stay out of that, because, you know, that's when I wanted to hang up. Well, again, I, I, I said that, yeah, you get into the... Go ahead, Liz. Y'all are talking to yourselves right now. See, y'all are not just talking to yourselves. You're talking to a million people. <laughs> right. Right. Well, it, okay. it, it all comes, well, everything goes back to the contract. Everything goes back to what I read at the beginning. It goes back to what the contract actually is. And it's not, it's not all, uh, yes, you got all the numbers and you got all this, all, the, all these technicalities. And that's the problem. The problem is there are all these technicalities that we don't know about. So take it back, make it simple. To make it very simple, you go right back to the contract and you define what the contract is and what it is not. And it is fraud. Right. It is fraud at the highest level. And it is fraud on so many levels. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is by all, Rights and, 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 and truth, it is a slavery agreement. What we've entered into right. is an indentured agreement of slavery. And right. that's what this is. And the other that's factual. And the other thing I heard the other thing I heard from you all tonight that was wonderful, unbelievable, was the fact that you brought all of these other players into a simple buyer seller contract. Now all of a sudden you've got these greedy bastards standing in line going, How can we get a piece of that? How can we get a piece of that? And they go, well, we'll just cut you in here, man. We'll just cut you in over here. Hey, Mm -hmm. we'll just clip you a little piece in here. It's no big deal. See, and that that's and that's man. what they and that's what they do and what and what are, and what are all those lines that you're talking about? Those are all broker and banker lines that are getting cut, and, and judges' right. lines that are getting cut in right. on all these things. Uh, so right. so we the consumers have literally been cut out of all the transaction, and we have been made a, right. we've been made the gambling chips for the elite and the and elite have won. Right. It does not stop yeah, at one, and we have to turn the tide on that. And the only way to turn the tide on any of this stuff, folks, is to start identifying what these contracts are. They are fraudulent. To the hilt, they are fraudulent. You were lied to. You were deceived. You were, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were, you were all humiliated yeah. by these people. And we have to, and, uh, yes, Carly's right. We have to set a boundary line and a, and a start point. And the start point is the contract. We've got to emanate out from the contract. And, and then we can get all of these complex uh, issues of patents and trademarks and so on and so forth. But it all comes down to the handshake between a buyer and a seller, which is a basic form of democracy, right. which, is, which is exactly right, that. Right That's what contract. freedom is. Uh-huh. That's what freedom is, and there's nothing that can get in between, uh, uh, no, no exemption, no loophole, nothing, no stupid-ass uh, 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 con- congressional act, or anything can get between the buyer and the seller. If there's no mutual assent, there's no consideration, there's no contract, period. And that's what these are. These are not contracts, I just period. Got a, I, just got a new, I just got a new picture for your page, a new banner. 
You have hat. a woman. You have a banner with a man and a woman and two beautiful children standing in front of a new home with a sign out with some funky realtor name on it, Apex Realty. And you have the old broker standing out there with his hand out and shaking the man's hand. And uh, then you have all of these characters up in the top in the background with their money hanging out with money sacks over their backs. Yep. With their hands coming down out of the sky. Yep, yep. Because that's, that's what it is. Let's steal from that person. Let's take more from that person. Let's drain that person's productivity. They're a pawn. These, yeah. these, these poor pawns. They're pawns. Exactly. Yes. And, and right. to, 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 to draw that back in, uh, like you said, you know, let's just simplify it a little bit. All of this started with the Financial Modernization Act, which um, was signed into law by Bill Clinton at the end of 1999. And we are calling Americans to, to end the world, actually, because this was unleashed by that on, from Wall Street. And we're really actually asking people to come together to clean up 16 years of fraud. Yes. Yes, come, to be, come and, together and reclaim your right as a, as a creditor. Uh, stand up to be Amer- an American, because the problem is we Americans are fighters. We're, we're, we're fighters, and, and, and frankly, nobody's fighting right now. I mean, there's people, a lot of people out there fighting these things, but yeah. by and large, you know, we've laid down, and we've got to stand back I, up again and take back our country. We've got to be Americans again. And, and, exactly. and take, we're, we're, we've become too lackadaisical by all this. Uh, uh, I love that word, lackadaisical, by the way. It's fantastical, too. Um, uh, we've become too lackadaisical. Like a, now I can't pronounce the damn word. Lackadaisical, <laughs> lackadaisical. Thank you. Lackadaisical. Uh, about, because we've been because we've been manipulated so much, and we've been deceived so many times, and, and we've been we've had this cloud of BS put over us, and and we got to stand up and be Americans again. I mean, our lives, but this country has gone to the, hell. The, uh, actually, and everything's gone to hell. Our product, everything's yeah, yeah, gone to hell. To 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 when come you, to point. Sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. To counterpoint to what Ken's saying, you know, really, actually, they've found a way to collateralize citizens. Yes. Uh, and, and they have encumbrances every, you know, through this process, through through these applications, they are encumbrancing us as collateral for um, actually bar- the government borrowing from the Federal Reserve and central banks, right? So that is the challenge that every every globally every uh, central bank is actually you know uh, every government has actually been pressed into this situation primarily because if you if you follow Drudge report um, he basically saw a uh, memo between uh, Geithner and Summers that said hey this is the end game right and they were rolling it out I think that memo came out in 97 or something like that, right? And they were, they, it was all documenting how they were going to unleash this through Wall Street, right? Yeah, yeah so, they did unleash us. And, and so the whole thing, though, is now what all Americans and everybody around the world needs to understand is that these financial agreements are really actually to transfer your right to your to the ownership of yourself. You're living you're, well. You're living the state of your life assets. cycle. Yeah, your life cycle, which is what MERS is, right? In well, yeah, 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 yeah. What MERS registration is, in Virginia, right? Right, right. right. MERS, MERS, MERS was designed by uh, um, uh, EDS, which is Electronic Data Systems. Well, Electronic Data Systems platform is a life cycle, and that life cycle they're referring to uh, annuities and living estates and whatnot. That's what they're stealing. So when we're putting, a, when we think we're getting a mortgage loan and we're putting our signature to paper for home ownership, no, 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 no. What they want from us is they want that signature. So we're not we're not we're not they're not seizing our our, our, our our title as in a grant deed. They're seizing our entire living being, our entire living estate, our entire right. product productivity, um, and they're capturing that and they're profiting from that. And that's what all this credit analysis, and all these credit things have to do with. We're controlled by our signature, and they've taken it and they and they they've sucked us of our productivity. They sucked us dry of it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you all ever bring up the new age? Uh, well, no. Let's get rid of that word. I, I didn't mean that. Scratch that from the jury. Yeah, that's yeah. Scratch that. Do you all? <laughs> do you all ever talk about the sociological, psychological issues behind this, like spelling, like words? Do you ever bring that? I, I can already feel the negative vibes from y'all. 
Do you ever talk about this from a sociological standpoint, about how people are easily hoodwinked here in America and about how people get drug into things? And we're, look, we got, and, and, and what competition you all are with competition with smart meters. You're in competition with the forced vaccines that are already here. People are going to jail. People are being fired from their jobs all over the United States for not vaccinating their children and themselves. You're fighting with chemtrails. You're fighting with the smart meters. You're fighting with government mind control technology. You're fighting with the RIFD chip that's already here in my town in the credit card. You're fighting with the RIFD chip that's already being implanted in our children in California. You're fighting with the New World Order uh, Illuminati uh, groups, the militia groups, the patriot groups. You're fighting. There's so many causes going on right now. Do you, you realize that you're in the – you're a small pebble on a beach, and, and people it people don't really matter. want to I mean, spread it, their time around. You know. Well, the people, well, it doesn't matter. Small, it, no, 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 hold on. What small, I'm saying is that if you fix, I'm sorry, Liz, go ahead. I was just going to say, even a small pebble makes a ripple in the river. Right. Yes, right. it does. And, and may point. I, may I just, point. yeah, may I, uh, basically, emerges. And my message is, and, and Kent, you know, we've been talking about this, and Liz, I'm so thrilled to be uh, connecting to you and Tyler. And the whole thing, though, is that once we fix the root, which is the control of money at the at the very root of this, right, it ripped the sociological, the political, and the environmental uh, 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 issues. It, it, it really is about, um, you know, Dispensing with the idea that there's scarcity in the natural universe, which is a lie uh, perpetrated through e economics, right? They say, at, at, at best, you know, scarcity to me is an indicator for demand in the free market, right? Yeah. So coming back to this, the whole point, though, is that once you, once you get the, the idea of emergence, uh, public banking and public insurance for the public good implemented in uh, in a um, uh, should I go into this Ken? just a little bit union right because uh, not really and someone actually improved my friend Sean Rasmussen in, in, in Salt Lake City improved on this he basically said instead of a credit union go with a credit co-op where you know you're uh -huh, actually uh -huh. a partial owner in the credit union, you're literally mm -hmm. going to take back the control of government, the financing of government, because through these programs you're going to be publicly, you know, which which is what uh, emerge eventually will um, be a platform for. That's true. We're basically That's going right. to That's be right. a, a new a new exchange for Main Street. Which is going to be in comp you know, which is basically going to say, "Hey, we've got a triple bottom line return for you here, right?" You're going I have a question. to. Mm -hmm. I have a question coming in from Australia. Uh, are you encouraging people not to buy a home without representation, and they probably will not get representation, and they probably will not understand the process? Are you encouraging people to rent or lease or homestead or what? Until we clean this up, I would go out on a limb and say, you know, hold off on buying your home. The, what about the, you? Until, yeah. yeah. What about you, Liz? Liz? Well, um, I don't think I would advise that um, because we have other remedies that um, I, I think home ownership is, I, I don't know, I don't see any downside to owning a home uh, as soon as we get there. And we're not going to be cleaning up this mess anytime soon. It's going to take – it took them 100 years to put it together. It's going to take us a no, few weeks didn't. to no. undo it. No, they – it. Oh, oh, sorry. Liz, it probably only took them about – well, I agree about the 100 years because the Federal Reserve's been in place for 100 years. And this is the culmination and the you know and and what we see is a, a corporatist cronyism that's basically bent on buying the entire owning the entire planet right and they're not oh. doing it yeah. you know yeah. but they're, they're basically 
ripping people off in order to do it through these applications. And well, the, what? But I, would, doubt, I would say that uh, it, it's the, been more than 100 years. I mean, the Illuminati, which started out as the international banking lobby, they were, you know, that, that goes I, back yeah. to the 1700s. I understand yeah, uh, that, you know, it, 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 I do agree with, I mean, I don't know if it's so much the Illuminati, but the banking industries, uh, founders to, you know, the thing is that I want to do my best to, uh, you know, just kind of reel in from the fringe and say, hey, listen, um, you know, um, I don't like here. to use the word. I don't. Yeah, you know, I don't like to use the word. And I've been doing this twenty three years. I don't like to use the word uh-huh. Illuminati either anymore because the Illuminati right. is made up of so many different factions. It's yeah. unbelievable and incomprehensible to the human mind. And one like myself, right. that's my expertise, is the Illuminati, right. the so called Illuminati. Right. Uh, and I want to bring it so into factions. the mainstream. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, speak over you. Well, Tyler, when you I mentioned, got a message when you, from Ken. What, I got a message from Ken. He got dropped, and he needs you to um, plug him back in. Ken, Mary, let me bring him back in. Let me. Yeah. No, I got him right now. Yeah. I... Okay, take him. You know, the, the, to me, you well, know, when you mention the Illuminati, on... you run a lot of people off. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hello? Well, if I if I might just say, if there were the reason I'm the Illuminati is right. because that's where they started. You know, the the, the Rothschilds uh, yeah, and, started that and whole want... Illuminati, and uh, if I may finish, they and, yeah, and it just evolved into more. Uh, today they're in Hollywood. They're all over yeah. in every venue that there is. He's, yeah, um, Sorry. The, real, coming back. the real power behind the yeah, all... doesn't say I'd kind to call. He says I'm still off. I'm Ken sorry, Ross. Liz. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm I was still just off. saying that it, the real power behind Yo, if you can hear all me, just this. stand by. We're working on this. Okay, stand we by. can hear you talking. Go ahead, Liz. Please. Yeah, I, I hear you. I was you. just saying. I hear you. The um, the real power behind all of this. Yeah, we're going to run over time. And, and banking okay. is a okay. banking is a small part of it. Is the committee of three hundred? Go ahead, hang me and, up. Free call. Me. So okay. anyway, but. But okay. I think we can clean up. I think right, and you know I. We, go ahead. Oh, my God. Liz, keep go going. Hang me uh, up. On oh, your piece on, on Illuminati. Okay. No, I, I'm finished with Illuminati. Well, I'm they're still on that. here. That's all that counts. Y'all just keep the, talking. The council. Everything's right. cool. Just okay. Um, technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, Carry the show. I will just tell him Ken that you think, yeah, he, um, I, I want to bring it into the mainstream and that, that, you know, the conspiracy theory I already had thrown at me three times today and the tinfoil hat and all that. Now, if I'm, and I get where you come, uh, where all this information on the sovereign citizenship, uh, citizens, the citizen rights, and all that other stuff is coming in, I completely get it because I have also gone down that same road and researched it and read it and then basically said, okay, how can I better communicate it? Um, Are you open to, you know, certain, I mean, some pretty mainstream stuff that that is actually very powerful because it's an insider um, thing from... Uh, it, it's an insider who... Unmute me, please. Washington, yeah, there's Ken. Okay. Now, as hey, soon as I'm back? unmuted, we'll be okay. Liz, Liz, are you open to... A I discussion? can't hear them still, producer. You want to try to uh, unmute uh, me over there? Yeah, there's a guy called Mike Lofgren, and everybody that's on this show needs to go pull this book from their library or buy it. His name is Mike Lofgren. He's a he was a twenty eight year old. Can't hear uh, him. We dropped all those calls. The, uh, Everybody's back. On the can you help a few new lines yes, and let somebody pop in here and start asking some questions. Yes, we don't have very long. Nine four nine. I didn't mean to interrupt you guys. Nine four nine uh, and four zero four. You have questions? Go ahead and uh, pop them. Hey, it's uh, Renee Powers. How you doing? Hey, Renee. How are you, Renee? Hey, hey Renee. great. 
<laughs> Hi, guys. Um, really good to hear you all. This is very good information that really needs to get out there, and, and you guys are doing a wonderful job. So first of all, thank you there. Um, the one thing I want to bring in, though, that I'm not hearing that is remedy is we have to shut down the county recorders and the sheriff and the police involvement where they are not doing their jobs. If we had the recorder's offices actually doing their jobs, we don't need the court. We can go right into those county recorders. We can demand with letters to the county council that they take our documents to the DA who has the ability to take those documents out of the record and go after the crooks. The problem we have at the base level, because all of this information is wonderful, Ken, and if you can all hear me, we if need I don't to do is be able to show at, the county uh, recorders that the fraud is there. Once we show yeah, the I'm county here. recorders that they're recording the fraud, they have a duty to protect our land records. So all of these debt collectors, all of these crooks, where is the base of their crimes being committed? At the county recorder's office. Then when we call the sheriffs and the police who are supposed to be the ones that per the FDCPA and, and um, you know, the CFPB, we're told that when you have title fraud, even on the county recorder's um, records, they say if you suspect that you have someone having stole your title or any kind of problems on your title, that you're supposed to contact them right away, well, they're not holding up their end because they're participating, because commissions are being paid. So in order for you guys to be successful, we've, we've been at this for years. This information is like the, the, bo- the, the top of the barrel. The barrel is full of information. So how do we get this information to matter? And I'm going to leave it with you at this because I have a lot more I could add in because, as you know, Ken, I'm very involved in, in the um, administrative process, which Liz is talking about. I've actually gotten to the end of it. I'm there now. Um. And okay. um, so, but the key here is we have to start having open communication at holding the public servants' offices to the grind to do their job. We don't need a court. We don't need a judge. We don't. We have county recorders that are crime scenes. So well, if we, we can to- put our effort into that, I think it's going to make a huge difference because our sheriffs aren't doing their job. They're assisting nope. in the crime. Okay. Yep, you're betting. Can you hear me, Kyler? Am I back on? Yeah, you are. Okay. Hey, Renee, how are you doing? Hi, hon. Good. Good, good. Yeah, you know, you know, when you talk about the county recorders, um, I think we've talked about this. It's not so much the county land records; it's the hidden indexes that they're that they're that they're keeping uh, from right. us. And those well, are what we double, need to get to. It's the hard the hard file has all the notes in it. But what I'm telling you is, we do know because Cindy and I, um, you know, when they sold her house two weeks ago. When you stand in the front of that county, um, that courthouse, and you realize that the sheriffs, as we all know, have multiple divisions of their department mm-hmm. because it's all corporation. So when you stand outside that courthouse, if you're in jurisdiction of the city, the police are the jurisdiction. But what well, happens is we have, the, we have the sheriffs standing no, out there they're saying they're did. keeping the peace. Not even on but the they're actually today, there uh, as off. a security bureau. So, um, and the the land records truly are where the crime scenes are being committed. And yes, well, there it, are yeah, multiple it, it, files. It is, be, it, is, it, it is because they're not we, we're not dealing with the traditional type of uh, instrument here. So yeah, in that right. context, absolutely they are. Um, uh, but yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the county records, the county, the county should be held accountable. The county judges should be held accountable. What, another thing that we didn't even bring up is uh, the liquidation of uh, the uh, bonds that put money into the counties and into the uh, county coffers and into the state coffers with each foreclosure that gets passed. Or gets well, yeah, because on. the board Sorry, of supervisors is involved in each foreclosure. The board of yeah, supervisors. Yeah, they'll be cut off. It's fine. Whoever your county supervisor is, the county council contacts them per each foreclosure or eviction to make sure well, that they are supervisor or commission. Is this a commissioner or a supervisor? No, it's the board of supervisors. Well, in okay. our area, it's the board of supervisors. Okay, yeah, up here it would be the commissioner. On. Yeah, on whether you're a borough or a municipality or where you are in the county. Right. So what what we are what we are doing and, and many of us have been doing now for a couple of years is doing the administrative process outside the court, doing exactly what they do to us, only law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, um, hey, Ken, Ken, let me interrupt. Yeah. Let me interrupt and say that we're going to go. 
We've got 60 seconds, but we're going to try to go overtime. I'm not going to explain the technicalities on that a few minutes <laughs> overtime. So if we get hung up on, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Ken Dost, my co-host. I want to thank Liz and Donald and the callers. I'm sorry we didn't get to answer you guys. We've got a board full, cram packed of callers. Sorry we didn't get to y'all, but thanks for staying on. Thanks for listening. And uh, we're going to be doing this, I hope, once a week with Mr. Ken Dost and his group. And we are going to be sponsoring Ken with Alternative Public Radio International. For those of you that don't know, we're advocates for mental health. We're advocates for senior citizens. And we've been doing that for over 20 years. So um, we're going to try to go a little overtime. We may get hung up here in just a second. Uh, we probably will. So thank all of you for tuning in. Thank all of uh, the guests tonight, and thank you, Ken Dost, for all of this wonderful information, and thank your team for all of their support and all that they're doing in their personal lives working on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, everybody, thank for listening. Thank you guys so much. Yep. Great work, Ken. And let, let's stand up and let's let's start taking notice of the facts and let's take back our country. Hey, thank you, Ken. Looking forward to the show next. uh, Looking forward to the show next Sunday night. Let's all try to make it because I'm dedicating Sunday night to you all. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Thank you much. Appreciate you. We'll see you all. All right. Night all. Goodbye. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Donald. Bye. Thank you.